We have our first ever U.S. Anthony congressman Gonzalez. joining the show Woo! here. It's Anthony Gonzalez. Hey. But for the there sake he of, is. For the sake of Anthony and for the sake of all of us, too, we are not talking politics. We're talking football with Anthony Gonzalez. <laughs> I'm sure you're happy about it. Nobody wants to talk politics, right? We want to talk football. <laughs> I certainly don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm, I'm very happy with this. That, that there's, no, there's no good to that side. Okay, Andy, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, when you, I mean, obviously you played, you had a great career, both in college and pro. When, when this time of the year comes around and camp is going and preseason games are starting, the regular season's right around the corner, the regular season starts two weeks from today, do you start getting that feeling still in your tummy like it's time to go play football or is that gone now? I don't think that ever leaves, honestly. Um, yeah. It's so funny you say that. Like, it, it happens at the same time mm-hmm. every year. My sleep changes. My attitude changes a little. I start to get excited. I, I, I like call myself down. Like, you're not going to camp, buddy. Like your your time is <laughs> your time is done. Um, but uh, but I, I still get super jazzed up and, and excited and uh, just totally enthused about about uh, football season. Pro mm-hmm. college, high school. It's, it's my favorite time of yeah, year. There's no, no better doubt. time in oh. in Ohio than than the fall. You know, Anthony, you played at Saint Ignatius, but I don't know if people notice. You had a brother that played at St. Ignatius. So I went to Camp McKinley and um, we played against your brother Joe and he was like the fastest dude I've seen. It was it was scary fast. Like he would just and he would glide and it didn't look like he was moving fast, but he was running past all our secondary who happened to be on the track team. Let me ask you this question. Who is actually faster in their heyday? You or your brother? Do you have any sibling rivalry with speed? Because you're pretty fast yourself, right? Yeah, no sibling rivalry. I mean, I you know honestly, I'll, it's a cop out. We never raced, so who the heck knows? But um, <laughs> but you know, you mentioned you mentioned those games, and honestly, like as a kid, those McKinley Ignatius games, specifically the ones that you and my brother played in, were some of the best football games I've ever seen in my life, and frankly, were an inspiration as I thought about you know what I wanted for my own career uh, and and just the excitement of of high school football. I mean, those games. You'd pack in 20, 30,000 people at those things for a high school mm-hmm. football game. People don't realize how unique that is. Most parts of the country are lucky to get 2,000 people at a, at a high school football yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, those were those were just amazing games. So good. We yeah. had Coach Kyle in here recently, and we I, at least I had never met him in person before. What a great interview that was. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was so much fun. He was awesome. And it's a, his memory – after all these years and all these games he's coached of not only the players that played for him, but the players that have played against him is mind blowing. And after meeting him, it's no surprise how great a coach he is. What are you, what are your memories of coach? Oh, I love coach Kyle. I mean, it's, it was such a joy and privilege to get to play for him. I still talk to him, not as often as I'd like, certainly, but, but still see him and catch up with him and, and frankly, you know, just appreciate his wisdom. Uh, he's such a funny guy. You know, the one thing, everybody knows him as this great football coach, and he absolutely is, uh, but he was a great track coach. He's a hilarious teacher. He's got all the enthusiasm in the world. Um, and, you know, I, I told him this, and I believe it. You know, people like that, their their impact is it's almost immortal because, you know, the lessons that I'm going to teach my kids and that you know, I hope my kids pass on to their own children those are lessons you learn from people like Coach Kyle uh, and, and Jim Tressel and, and Tony Dungy are all people I've been fortunate enough to, to play for. Um, but, you know, when when you're that type of person who's sort of an institution unto himself, uh, your impact far outlives you uh, and, and permeates so much of, of the people that you've come in contact with. So I, I am blessed beyond words uh, to have spent some, some of my formative years uh, with Coach Kyle. Now, Anthony, I, I'm more familiar with you, I think, than everybody else up here. I don't know if you remember, I covered you at Ohio State. I was an Ohio State beat writer for the Lorraine Morning Journal. I was at your house. Don't be thirsty. I talked to don't your be thirsty with the Congress. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> no, but I, but I was thinking about this driving in, fellow Avon Laker. I was thinking about this driving in. Weren't you a big Michigan fan growing up? And wasn't, oh, yeah. your, wasn't your dad, like, really, was he in Les Miles' wedding? Or they were good friends? Or there was something there? I was trying to remember this morning coming into the studio, what the story was behind that. Yeah, still best friends. Um, Les, you know, growing up, Les was like an uncle to me more than a, you know, than a friend of my dad's. Um, And to your point, my dad played at Michigan. He played for Bo, 
Les was his roommate. Uh, they're still best friends. Les's parents both worked for my dad um, when when he started his his steel company. Um, and so, you know, I grew up a huge Michigan fan. Um, you know, two things sort of got in the way of that. Uh, one was, you know, Jim Trestle came to Ohio State, and you know, he's he's just an amazing person, and and I, I read well with him. Second was I went up to Ann Arbor for one of these junior days. I went with my mom, and they completely ignored me. I mean, just <laughs> completely ignored me, and uh, and thought I was they thought I was a kicker actually. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, so the uh, you know, God bless kickers, but I'm no kicker. So um, <laughs> so they uh, so. They, Huh. They said so, like you know, you do, you know, you you you're on the kicking and punting. I said, well, I return kicks and punts. They go, really, a kicker and a punter, and you return. I said, oh, well, no, wow. I'm a receiver and a wow, DB. Wow. Um, so, you know, knowing knowing what I know as a parent now and how that must have made my mother feel. I mean, she must have been mortified. <laughs> um, so we left after like you know 45 minutes. And meanwhile, by the way, they were all over. And these are good players, but they were all over. You know, Prescott Burgess. Um, mm. Darius Hiley, Dante, you know, that some of these guys, I'm like, I've played against these guys. Like, do y'all, do y'all watch any film? Um, so, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was sort of a, a slap in the face. And, uh, the very next week we went to Ohio state and, um, and Trestle couldn't have been nicer. I mean, it just couldn't have been better. And so, uh, we, we then, you know, after many months of thinking through it, uh, ultimately I decided to go to Ohio state and it, couldn't have made a better decision. Now, Michigan ripped through about 15 coaches in 15 years. So who was so incompetent? No, who was the coach at the time? That they didn't even know who you were. Call them out. That was that was Lloyd Carr staff. I'll give him a little oh, bit. Wow. So the guy who was recruiting me uh, was a guy named Stan Parrish, and, mm. and he was great. Um, yeah. He had just left to take a different job, uh, and whoever they had brought in to replace him probably just wasn't up to speed yet. Wow. Um, and uh, I mean, we were, yeah, we were, we were very much ignored um, in that whole process. But uh, but it was kind of funny. Here's sort of a funny story. So like before all that, um, you know, my uh, Maslin has this thing. I think they still do it. It's like a touchdown club event where the the MVP for each visiting team gets invited to a breakfast or a dinner. Um, it's right after the season. It's in, and co- uh, Coach Trust, you know, invites And my dad, you know, hey, look, if he says anything, he, you know, wants to offer a scholarship, just tell him thanks, but no thanks. Um, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're going to, you know, you're going to go to Michigan. And I'm like, all right, you know, I can, I can do that. Um, and so, you know, Coach Trestle comes up and he reached out, you know, I'm Jim Trestle and, and uh, I'm, I'm excited that uh, we're going to be offering you a scholarship. And I look at him and I say, Coach, I'd be honored to play for you. Oh, <laughs> and wow. so I, I totally, I totally botched the line. I, I went back up to him later. I said, I actually, I gotta, I gotta actually think about this thing. Uh, and then, you know, then those junior days happened, and, and it became obvious what the right thing to do was. Congressman, I understand you probably got an opinion on paying college athletes pretty wrapped up in all of that throughout your lifetime. What do you think of the NIL, and how do you think the NCAA handled it? So I have been working on NIL legislation for you know the last two years. I, I think NIL properly done is is appropriate. Um, it, it's never made sense to me why why college athletes can't capitalize on their name, image, and likeness. I mean, everybody else in this country, um, you know, even it, it, members of Congress can write books and do all kinds of things. Like I, it just it strikes me that for forbidding um, uh, college athletes from from NIL doesn't make sense. Having said that, the way that it's been implemented and the way that it's been rolled out, um, I don't believe is going particularly well. Um, you know, I think these collectives are, are sort of goofy and, and really polluting the system where you've got sort of groups of boosters around the country banding together and becoming like de facto GMs mm-hmm. uh, for these, these schools. I just think that makes no sense at all. Um, so, you know, having some, some clearer guardrails around what's appropriate and what isn't in the terms of recruiting and and inducements to transfer i think would be appropriate um but but nil as just like a general concept uh, i've been for that since i was at ohio state i'm, I'm for it today I, I just i i can't think of a a rational reason why we would prevent an 18 year old kid who you know, we all know most of these kids don't come from healthy families 
um, you know, to prevent them from capitalizing on that has never made any sense to me. Uh, it, kind, it still doesn't. It kind of feels like the wild, wild west right now, though. That's how I've kind of compared yeah, it. Yeah, there's no, really, absolutely. It's kind of nuts right now. Yeah, now the implementation has been bad. Um, there's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, I, I, I look at what's going on and I see how it's evolved, and it's just like, you know, I, I think if the NCAA had had gotten in front of this and and uh, you know not been essentially forced into it by California and some other states adopting these laws, I think it it would be conducted a lot more thoughtfully. Um, and frankly, I'm Congress. Um, trying to figure out a way to uh, you know I, I, nothing will pass by the time i leave i'm leaving at the end of the year but um but to hopefully see congress or somebody step up and say hey look you know we need else here and just to system because to your point it's wild west uh, it's actually part of the problem with that is it hurts the athletes because you know there's no transparency with respect to what are these deals what cut does an agent get how are the terms what are the payments you mm-hmm. know so you hear these, you know, so-and-so signed an $8 million deal. That might be complete garbage. It might be 50% going to an agent and it's filled with a whole bunch of incentives where, you know, 8 million all of a sudden looks like, you know, 10 grand or something like that. Mm-hmm. And you just have no idea um, because there's no, there's no transparency and there's, there's really no rules. Um, and so that's, that's what needs to get cleaned up. Um, but the, the general concept of, you know, can an athlete, use name, image, and likeness, I think the answer is, is yes for me. And the reason ultimately it's such a mess is because, as you said, the NCAA and the schools were refusing to budge on this, and they had their hands forced, and they should years ago this should have been, they should have come up with a good way. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But I, I, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, look, like the it wasn't until California passed their law and a couple other states, and then the Supreme Court ruled against them about a year ago now um where they they basically said all right we're done we're you know, right. sort of open the floodgates we're, we're we're tapping out we're tired of getting sued here yeah. um and um and that's why i think we're in the position that we are so you know a lot of uh, there's a lot of change has happened in the last couple of years and i think a lot of change is coming um and you know the hope is that you can do it in a way that protects the system because the college sports system is unbelievable uh, and not just not just football, right? Like my, my wife was a college swimmer. Um, you know, and I always talk about NIL in these contexts too. My wife was a college swimmer at Stanford university, which is a great university. One of the most expensive places in the world to live. Mm -hmm. Um, most of those answer, uh, most of those athletes, not on full scholarship. She couldn't even teach swim lessons. So, you know, what are you, (laughs) what are you going to do? You know, you can't teach swim lessons. So that you're going to be ineligible if you teach a $20 an hour swim class so that you don't have to take out a bunch of debt. Yeah. Um, and so that never made sense. So, you know, I, I think you say, OK, let's rationalize these rules and get in front of this. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you wait for Congress or the court to come in and solve your problem, they're probably not going to solve it in a way that you're particularly happy about. And I think that's what's happened. Uh, something you were not particularly happy about was the Buckeyes losing a rare loss in recent years to Michigan last year. What was your reaction and what do you expect the Buckeyes to do to that team up north this year. Yeah, that was a tough one. You know, I got all these people like, well, isn't it good for the rivalry? I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> what do I care about? <laughs> I want to win every single year. Um, I don't want to have to... It's good for the rivalry. <laughs> like, it's good for the rivalry when we beat them. <laughs> so, uh, so, in any event, at least that's my view. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I, I think uh, Ohio State, you know, the, the rankings are, are awfully high. I think uh, they got a great offense for sure. You know, the defense is, has got to show up and, and certainly stop the run uh, better than they did last year. But um, I know they're excited, and I, I know that they've had some turnover on the coaching staff. Um, and, uh, you know, Coach Days is as good as it gets. We're, we're very lucky to have him. So I'm excited for the Buckeyes. I, you know, I don't, I'm not in the prediction business, but, uh, but I'm, I look at that team and see the team as, as talented as any that I I certainly played on, um, and, uh, and I think it'll be a fun year for him. You know, Anthony, right now it seems like Ohio State has always had good running backs. They've always pounded the ball back in the day. Um, they have the 96 running backs named Wells. All of them was pretty good. Uh, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I think right now Ohio State, if you ask people, 
they're known for this explosion in talent at a, re a receiver, Alave and, and uh, Garrett Wilson and Jackson Smith and Jigba, and just throwing the ball everywhere. Um, but I will say that your team, when Jim Trestle was here, was the team that actually kind of started that movement. You had you, you had Brian Hartline, you had Rubisky, um, and a couple older guys like uh, Teddy Ginn, and then uh, uh, San Antonio Holmes. Um, do you think that Coach Trestle kind of started this thing because he started doing more innovative things? He started going five wide, more receivers on the field um, back in 06, 07. Yeah, you know, that was definitely true. But even before that, you know, you had Mike Jenkins, who was there when I got there as a freshman. He was a first-round pick. And when I would look at, you know, historic Ohio State teams, I would think about Terry Glenn and David Boston and Kenyon Rambo. You know, Ohio yeah. State's always had – some great wide receivers um and you know with heartline now running the room he's as good a recruiter as there is in this country um and and we are very lucky uh for for him to be pulling in as much talent as he is because you know you lose two first rounders but we've got at least one first rounder on that roster and we probably have another two or three uh if you look at the the full receiver depth chart uh, and so the the beat goes on and and the tradition thrives uh, and that's that's going to be great for ohio state uh, and it's as a former receiver, you know, I, I love the offense running the ball, but I like seeing them throw it. Um, and, uh, and I'm excited for, for them. And, and I one one guy in particular who just on a personal level, Marvin Harrison, Jr. You know, I played with his father. Yeah. Marv Jr. Was like five years old when I first met him running around mm -hmm. our indoor facility. Um, and so to see him there uh, and see him grow up has been so fun, uh, but also as a reminder of how old I'm getting. Um, but uh, but they're uh, they're going to be in in good hands for as long as Heartline's there and and he's he's bringing in that talent. Clear something up for us because that 06 title game against Florida, the rumor was Ted Ginn was like the feature player in the entire package, and then Roy Hall sprained his ankle or tore up his ankle on that return when he brought him down in celebration. Is that true? Was Teddy like the focal point of that game plan? Yeah, that rumor's true. Teddy was going to play quarterback. He, he had a, we had a package for him at quarterback. We had a package for him at running back. And obviously he was going to be a receiver. Uh, and then he goes and returns the opening kickoff for a touchdown uh, on an awesome play. Just classic Teddy Ginn. He's running like a deer. Everybody else looks like they're stuck in mud. Um, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately, you know, that ankle sprains. And, and there was no he – try, he tried to go back out. You know, I think he came out for maybe two more series. But it was obvious he just – it just wasn't going to hold up. Um, what, which what was, was the quarterback package? He was going to be such a big part. What was the quarterback package? Uh, they were going to – so they were going to have him – now let me see if I can remember this correctly. He was – it was going to be like a wildcat, and I think Troy was going to um, split out wide and then motion back into the backfield, and we had some, some read option stuff uh, and then some like, you know, now what would be called RPOs, but like back then RPOs weren't a thing. Um, yeah, he was going to do some RPO type stuff uh, and and really put them in a bind because it's just something we had never shown on on film. Um, and then when he went out, I'll never forget this, when he was finally declared out of the game, which I think it was like the third series, and uh, Daryl Hazel, who was our receiver coach, uh, pulled us down and he said, all right, guys, Here's what we're gonna like do one ends on the board boy. We're we're basic in plan now. Um, and uh and that was like you, unfortunately you saw the result how, how that all turned out. Mm -hmm. Congressman, you, as you said, uh you'll be leaving Congress in January. Uh have you considered getting back into coaching at all? And even if not, if or if so, what kind of lessons did you take from your time in Congress that you think would help you out when you're if you were coaching? Um so in terms of getting back into sports, I, I don't know that I'll get into coaching, but I, 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 one thing I have learned about myself is I just love sports, in particular the game of football, but I love all sports. Um, I really do. I, I just, I don't know, something about them. It's like you can throw on anything, and if there's two people competing, I'm just going to enjoy it. It um, doesn't matter what it is. So, um, you know, I, I could see myself doing that. I haven't really put a ton of thought into it, but, you know, we'll, we'll definitely explore that um, as we get closer to the end. Uh, and then in terms of lessons, you know, honestly, my goal was to bring lessons that I learned in the locker room into Congress around how to work together, how to solve problems, get things done, 
uh, and, and chase really big meaty goals as a group. Um, those are things you learn in the locker room better than any other place I've been. Uh, and, and Congress just doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wanted to bring lessons from my life to Congress. I don't know that there's a ton of lessons to bring from Congress back to, <laughs> back to the real world um, other than to, you know, try to behave like an adult and don't, you know, act like a crazy person, which is unfortunately how a lot of folks are in my profession, <laughs> but, um, sad but, but, true. Uh, but sad, sad, but true. But, yeah. um, you know, there's, there, there are some things you can bring out for sure. I mean, there's, there's, you know, pushing through adversity and even though, you know, you're at odds with, with your opponent, quote unquote, um, finding ways to be productive with them and, and find win-wins and things like that. Um, so that, those lessons will, will persist and they'll stay. Um, but admittedly, I, I think football has more to teach Congress than the other way around. 100%. By the way, speaking of Congress, we just saw, I don't know if you, can he see it, Mike? Yeah, he can just be able to see that. Okay. I can see we, it. Yeah, we just played the video of you hitting an, what I believe was an inside the park home run. With no explanation whatsoever <laughs> while you were giving a very, <laughs> while you were giving a very sincere response. I know, but I was going to bring it up with him, and then you could have played the video. But here we go. Here's the – I mean, you're still running – you're talking about your old now. I think you're right. Well, oh, this is not the – is this the inside the park home yeah, run? Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is – I mean, you're moving right there. Yeah, nope, you didn't pull a <laughs> hamstring. You didn't pull a quad. That was all good. Uh False. I did pull a hamstring. Um, <laughs> so, uh, oh, God, I could say I I have not run that hard yeah. since I left football. Uh, yeah. And as soon as I hit it, so like right here, I hit the ball. Oh no! Now, now you're showing me uh, pop out. Well, don't but, show me uh, pop out. No, it's it's on. Bloop single. Oh, blooped but, in for a second. The next, the next play oh, is another replay sick. of the home run. By the way, Congressman, okay. it's coming up again. <laughs> yeah. Very, very generous bloop single. That's an error. But, uh, but in any event, um, as as soon as as soon as I hit it, yeah, you know, like your dinosaur brain kicks in, and I'm like, you got to score. Like you just got to <laughs> score. You hit it. You hit it. You hit it hard. Like you hit it hard enough to just run. Um, yeah. And uh, and so I made it through. But yeah, yeah. the very next inning, a, a ground ball. I play center field on the team. They, Hit a ground ball to me. I went for it, and I pulled both hamstrings. And I'm like, you're an idiot. Oh, both? <laughs> you pulled both? The Gary Baxter. Oh, I'm out of shape. I don't even I don't even work out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, yeah, I oh, mean, that was – it was fun, though. I'll tell you what. It was fun. But, you know, uh, but it yeah, looks no, like I'm, you have some baseball experience because you were, you were loading up right when you swing, and you ran the bases like, a, like you knew what you were doing there. I mean, how much baseball experience did you have as a kid? Not my. I stopped oh, wow. playing in sixth grade, um, oh, wow. but you know that, that baseball team. I swear, to, I'm not even joking. They have more practices for that baseball team than we did for any NFL training camp <laughs> I was ever a part of. Which is like, <laughs> ridiculous. So did, after, did you did you feel the, did you feel bad at all playing against all these kids who were just on like speech and debate and, <laughs> right, and, and model UN in high school? <laughs> You got there playing against Jerry Nadler. That can't. That's not a com competition, is it? Not at all. It's like, hey, put your put your foot on the throat. Come on now, let's go and keep the score. We got to win. So, I don't know whoever was no, playing. It, uh, it was yeah. fun. Yeah, whoever was playing first. I don't know who was playing for the Democrats, but whoever was playing first base for the Democrats looked like a big guy. I don't know who that is, but he looked like a big dude. Like he looked like an athlete. That guy. I don't. Maybe not. But so. Well, there's another pro. So Colin Allred played for the Titans. He's a Democrat. Yeah. Um, he's better at baseball than me, but he uh, he was their uh, center fielder. Uh, he's a big dude. He was a linebacker. Played at Baylor. Yeah. Good guy. Um, but uh, yeah, the Democrat. You know, just like generally speaking, Democrats tend to be younger in, in terms of the members. Yeah. So they have got a slight. Historically, have had an edge in that game, but uh, we beat them the last two years, so yeah. that's been good. All right, good for you. <laughs> uh, we we appreciate you yeah. taking the time so much. Thanks for spending the time Ooh. with us. It was great. We'd love to have you back again. Thank you, Congressman Anthony Gonzalez. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, co hey, Congressman, Congressman, thank you very much yeah. for uh, thank you very much for representing Ohio very well. And just so you know, we're, we're very proud of you. And thank you for your time in Congress. Yep, yep. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Thanks for having me.